Hello friends, this video on Adolescents Part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So till now we have talked only about the hormones which initiate reproductive processes. But there are many other hormones also other than the sex hormones. So let us quickly have a look at the other important hormones. Now, now these hormones are secreted by the various endocrine glands. So if we want to talk about the hormones, then we will first have to talk about the important endocrine glands. So let us quickly name the important glands of the endocrine system. Now all the endocrine glands together constitute the endocrine system. Now what are the important endocrine glands? Hypothalamus, pituitary, pineal. So all these three glands, they are located in the human brain. In fact, I already mentioned about the pituitary gland that this is the master gland because it controls the secretion from all other glands. Thyroid gland which is located near the voice box, parathyroid, adrenal gland, islet of Langerhans of pancreas. So in pancreas also we have the endocrine part of pancreas which is called the islet of Langerhans. Ovaries and testis. So we have already discussed about ovaries and testis because they release the sex hormones the testosterone and estrogen, they are released from these ovaries and testes. So we have already discussed about these two. So now we are not going to discuss about all of them, but at least the important ones we will discuss. Like we will talk about pancreas, we will talk about adrenal, we will talk about thyroid and finally the pituitary. So these are some of the glands which we will cover right here. So let us quickly look where are these different glands located. So this is male and this is a female. So if you see here, these hormones released by these glands, they control the chemical coordination of the body. So you can see here, the only difference is that in females we have ovary and in males we have the testis. Other than that, everything else remains the same. So we already know that these three, pineal, pituitary and hypothalamus, they are present in the brain. Thyroid is present near the uh, voice box towards our neck. Thymus and parathyroid are also present near the thyroid gland that is within the thoracic cavity. Adrenal glands are present here just above the kidneys and pancreas contain the island of Langerhans. So this is how the uh, different endocrine glands are distributed in our body. Now, not only the endocrine glands alone form their endocrine system, but the hormones released by them are more important because those hormones perform the most interesting role as far as endocrine system is concerned. So let us start our discussion with the first endocrine gland that is thyroid gland. First, let us see where is it located. So it is located at the base of larynx. So you see this is larynx which is the voice box. So at the base of the larynx you have this butterfly shaped gland. So this butterfly shaped gland is the thyroid gland. It has two lobes on either side of trachea. Where is trachea? Trachea is this. This is windpipe and this trachea will go down and then it will connect to the lungs. So this is trachea. So if you look at the structure of the endocrine gland, it has two lobes, one and two. And the two lobes are on either side of the trachea. So trachea is like at the center and on each side there is one lobe. So these two lobes are connected by a tissue which is called the isthmus. So this connective tissue which connects the two lobes that is called isthmus. So lobes are connected by isthmus. It is like a bridge which is made up of connective tissue connecting the two lobes of thyroid gland. Thyroid gland is brownish red in color and it is highly rich with blood vessels. Now what are the hormones that are released by the thyroid gland? So the important hormones which are released are thyroxine which is also chemically it is tetraiodothyronine. So if you see tetraiodo that means 4, tetra means 4. 
So four iodothyronin. So here if you look at its structure, this is how it looks like. Now since the name is quite big, because of tetra, which means four, it is abbreviated as T4. So this is one hormone. The another hormone which is released by this is triiodothyronin, that is T3. So this one is T4 and this one is T3. Here you have three iodine, one, two and three. And here you have four iodine, one, two, three and four. So it is tetraiodothyronin. Now what is the function of these hormones? Function is primarily in cellular oxidation that is when we eat food. So the food reaches each and every cell of our body after absorption but that food needs to be oxidized to release energy. So that process is called cellular oxidation and these hormones help in the process of cellular oxidation. It also helps in metabolism of carbohydrate proteins and fats that is breaking down carbohydrates, proteins and fats into their simpler forms. Like carbohydrates are the basic unit of carbohydrates are monosaccharides. Similarly, the basic unit of proteins are amino acids. Fats are again made up of the fatty acids. So breaking these fats, proteins and carbohydrates into their simpler forms, that is also done by uh, these thyroid gland hormones. Supports the process of RBC formation. More and more red blood cells are being formed. Maintains water and electrolyte balance. That is extremely important to maintain the right water balance inside our body. It also releases another hormone called thyrocalcitonin. So what does it do? It maintains the calcium and phosphate level in blood. Now maintaining the right level of calcium and phosphate is important because one of the important constituent of our bones is calcium and phosphate. So if this balance is uh, disturbed, in that case a person might suffer from problems in his bones. So these are some of the hormones released by the thyroid gland. So how it helps to regulate calcium and phosphate level? Whenever these levels go very high, it helps to decrease the level. So basically it will control the balance. It will not let it go very high. What can happen in abnormalities? Have you ever seen somebody with a swollen neck like this as you can see on the screen? So you would often see people suffering from diseases where they have a swollen neck. So that swollen neck is due to the swelling of the thyroid gland. So abnormal thyroid hormone production can lead to hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. So if too much of hormone is produced, too much of thyroid hormone is produced, it can cause hyperthyroidism. Hyper means more. And if very less thyroid hormone is produced, it can lead to a condition called hypothyroidism. So hypo means less. Now, iodine is needed for thyroid hormone synthesis. So, for synthesis or the for production of thyroid hormone, iodine is an important constituent. Now, there are people who do not consume enough iodine in their diet. You would have seen in television ads that whenever you have the ad for salt, they say that this is iodized salt. That means that is it contains iodine. Now, why? Because salt can contain iodine and that is a good way in which you can intake iodine. Because if your body doesn't have sufficient iodine, then thyroid hormone will not be produced in the right amount. And if thyroid hormone is, will not be produced in the right amount, it can cause this kind of abnormality. So hypothyroidism, as I said, lack of iodine. Hypo means less. So when there is less production of thyroid hormone, it causes hypothyroidism. So one such case of hypothyroidism is goiter, where the neck swells. So this is an example of goiter. So swelling of neck due to malfunctioning of thyroid gland. So goiter can happen if somebody is not taking enough iodine in his or her diet. Because if iodine is not there, thyroid hormone is not getting synthesized. That means it, it, uh, that person is entering into hypothyroidism. And as a result of hypothyroidism, the thyroid gland swells up and this causes goiter. 
So that is why you remember in one of my previous slides, I told you that it is very important that hormones are secreted in the right amount. If they are present in more than desired amount, that can be a problem. If they are present in less than the desired amount, that can also be a problem. So here you can see that exactly. Now it is not only that if less amount of thyroid hormone is released only then it can cause problem even hyperthyroidism can also be a problem hyper means more so that means when more in when thyroid hormones are released in excess that can also be a problem so increased rate of synthesis and secretion of thyroid hormones so what happens in this case this condition can cause cancer or nodule development on thyroid gland so excess of tissue start growing up due to hyperthyroidism. So you see, less secretion can cause goiter, more secretion can cause hyperthyroidism and both the conditions are not good for the survival of human beings. So this has adverse effects on body physiology. So it can have a negative impact on the overall functioning of the body. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.